Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Small Steps to Self-Love. My name is Shelby Lee. I am a mental health writer and self-love advocate, and today I am joined by Bridget Burrick-Brown. She is the founder of the Beyond Beauty Project that focuses on inspiring confidence and self-esteem around body image and mental health. I am so excited to talk with her today about redefining beauty and really diving into how this can affect our self-love. Thank you so much for coming on, Bridget. I would love to just pass it over to you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about you and what you do. Okay. Um, Well, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to chat with you today. Um, My name is Bridget Burke Brown, and I'm the founder of the Beyond Beauty Project. And um, yeah, I'm just working very hard every day, helping to inspire confidence around our body image, our beauty, and our mental health, because I think they're all interconnected. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. How did you get started with this type of work? That's a really big question, (laughs) because I feel like it's sort of the history of my life. Um, I, you know, grew up like a lot of us did with a challenging sort of childhood. My mom had multiple sclerosis and she was in a wheelchair by the time I was um, seven. Um, You know, and I just saw her struggle with her. She was very beautiful. And I saw her as she got sick, really start to struggle with her her like physical appearance declining and her body, you know, declining and gaining weight from steroids. And then I went on to um, live in the dance world. And then I went on to the modeling world. And, And when I was in that world, it sort of led me to this, like, you know, I was traveling a lot on my own. I was in Paris. This was before like cell phones and being connected to the world still. And, I just kind of dove into like self-help and psychology. I was always sort of interested in that. That's what, if I would have finished my degree in school, that's what I would have done psychology. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, you know, we were always asked to lose weight and that sort of stuff. So I started educating myself on a healthier way to do it. So I dove into personal training, holistic nutrition. Um, But there was always this, feeling of, God, I wish I had a more innate like confidence. Mm -hmm. And I always said like, one day I'm going to help women and girls with confidence. I didn't really know what that meant, but, um, and then I always shared kind of, um, like people would always ask like, you know, what do you do for your skin? So I was always sharing that kind of stuff. And then, so I kind of, and then I had this really rock bottom where, Um, I had a few years of, I lost a bunch of family members. I went through a bunch of, uh, miscarriages. I was going back to the modeling world thinking like, okay, I'll get one thing back to like it was before my world sort of flipped upside down. And I was told that I needed to lose weight and I was 41 and I had just lost twins at five and a half months. And I was like, you know what? Mm Mm-mm. I think I'm going to, I'm going to start my project for real. I'd already started kind of sharing on my social media about depression and suicide ideation and all of those sort of things. And I just started a podcast and I just wanted to really change this narrative of feeling like we had to look a certain way to be accepted or to be enough. And so I've I dove into it, not really knowing exactly what I was doing. And it's just sort of, you know, manifested into this like beautiful creation now. And I'm, I love it. I love what I do. I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing your story. And I'm sorry to hear about the losses that you had. Um, I also Mm -hmm. come from a dance background and there's definitely a lot of body image that plays Mm -hmm. into the dance world and the competitive dance world. So I can definitely oh, relate yeah. to some of those feelings that you talked about in the podcast as well. I dove into this, um, not really knowing what to expect either, totally like out of my comfort zone, but it's been really fun connecting with a lot of different people who are Isn't doing, you know, all different types of mental health work and self-love work like yourself. So, um, yeah, yeah that's amazing. I know. I love the connections that I've made through the podcast. Yeah. It's, it's so, so cool. And I learned so much. I just love learning from people. Me too. Me too. Yep. Yeah. 
Um, I would love to learn more about how you define the word beauty with the Beyond Beauty Project. What does that look like? So I say beauty is how we feel. Mm -hmm. I think that I learned really quickly from being in the modeling world that how you look on the outside doesn't matter if you're not feeling good on the inside. Mm -hmm. So I could have, you know, been getting books for the cover of Vogue and getting told that I was beautiful, but inside I felt horrible. I felt ugly, you know? So I really think that beauty has to come from inside as cliche as it is. And I think beauty comes from our physical, our mental and our spiritual health. Um, and then I really think that beauty is so much bigger than our appearance. It's this big, beautiful thing. And we can really, you know, someone that we might think is beautiful can open their mouth and they can turn ugly like very quickly right mm -hmm. so I think it's like are you being a beautiful person what does that mean are you being kind are you being open are you how are you showing up in the world mm -hmm. and I really think being beautiful is being unique I think if we totally. could start celebrating that more and really owning that instead of listening to the world tell us that we need to look a certain way and to have a certain trend body, but to really celebrate like how unique we all are because we are. And that's awesome. It's so cool. Totally. Yeah. And those messages are everywhere. The stereotypes are everywhere. Um, oh my God. Girl. TV, radio, <laughs> everywhere. Everywhere. Social media. So mm -hmm. what are some ways that we can combat that and not let that affect our mental health or not let that affect our vision of ourselves? Well, I think expanding our view first, I think specifically with like, maybe let's just take like our social media scroll. You know, I, I saw somebody, this is an example. I saw somebody yesterday, I was reading someone's post and she wrote a pretty long comment on this girl's, um, I think it's just like a body positive page. And she's like, you know, when I first started going on your page and I started seeing bigger bodies, I hated it. I hated it. I would scroll by really fast. It made me uncomfortable, but I kept following you for some reason. I liked your message, but like with, when you posted the bigger bodies, it made me uncomfortable. She's like, now I love it. And I've expanded my view of what beauty is, right? So I think if you actually want to not... If you're feeling sort of like in handcuffs from, oh my God, I cannot live in this beauty ideal or I can't be perfect enough, or I'm feeling a little bit controlled by it, expand your view, expand what you think is beautiful. And I think we have to kind of step outside of the box a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think that advertising is starting to show different bodies and different races, which is nice, but there is still this like strong need for us all to live up to these unrealistic beauty standards. Mm -hmm. And now there's so many more tools. There's so many cosmetic procedures or filters or face tuning to achieve it. So we have to be careful, right? Um, so I think, yeah, expanding that, I think educating ourselves on, um, you know, knowing the difference between a filtered advertisement or a retouch advertisement and like real skin, like knowing like that's actually not real skin. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to be able to achieve that. So yeah, I think, and then I think probably the biggest part is really understanding that we're more than our bodies. We're more than our beauty. We're more than our appearance. And our, that can't be the most important thing about us. You know, there's so much more about us. So like, what are the things that make us unique? Like what is really cool about us that has nothing to do with what we look like mm -hmm. and also appreciating what our bodies do that we're so quick to say like oh, my stomach or oh, my arms aren't small enough or they're not toned enough or, um, but like really, so when I was really healing myself from some of my body dysmorphia, which still comes up for me, you know, I think like it's like a process and it's something that maybe you're always working on. 
And, totally. but when I was really deep into it, after I had lost, um, the twins at five and a half months, I wrote a lot of love letters to my body. Cause I'm a big journaler mm-hmm. and too. I would just wake up and write like, it's your body. Like, I love you. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry that I'm like so mad at you right now. Like, I'm so mad at you. Yeah. Like I, you failed me. Like, I feel like you failed. But I was like really honest, you know, I was like, I feel like you failed me. And like, like, you don't look the way I want you to look. But like, I love you. Well, it makes me cry. Yeah. <laughs> but like, and it just, it just started being like, but I love you. And like, thank you. Like yeah. you're healthy and you're recovering and like you have legs at work. And so, yeah, that's so like, powerful, but it no, is, okay. it's like really yeah. thinking like we're more than our appearance. And like, when we get so caught up in like what we look like and like trying to lose three pounds or the forever seven pounds, it's like, that takes up so much mental space and time and it takes us away from the present. It's like understanding that our bodies are for experiences. Like if we weren't living, we're souls that live in these bodies. Like if we didn't have these bodies, like we couldn't have this experience right now. Couldn't mm-hmm. fall in love. We couldn't dance with our friends, you know? So I think it's really reminding ourselves, like I am so much more than my appearance. Yeah. I'm freaking cool. <laughs> like I have things to say. I'm smart. I'm funny, whatever you are, you know? Totally. That's so yeah. powerful. I love that reframe, reframing how you look at mm-hmm. beauty, how you look at your body. That's, and things are yeah. so much more interesting. Like now that I've reframed it, I'm like, there is so much more interesting thing. I There's a few, you know, we have a, obviously we, you, you know, you have friends from different groups and like, I have a few friends that like, that's all they want to talk about. And now that I've sort of started reframing a lot, the last few years, I'm like, I find it pretty boring. I don't want to talk about, I still love like a red lip and a good blow dry. And I love putting on a dress and feeling feminine. Yeah. But I love talking about other stuff, mm-hmm. more, you know, more than that. Of so of course, mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that tip about journaling and talking to your body. Are there any other steps that you take or have taken during your journey to accepting your body more? Is there anything else that you've done that you found has really been powerful for you? Absolutely. Um, I think getting out of the mirror is huge. I think there's a lot of body checking and you know, standing in front of the mirror and pinching our thighs. And I really spend minimal time in the, sometimes sometimes it's to the point where I go out the house and then I'm like, Ooh, like before, like in the morning, I'm like, Ooh, should have looked at myself, but just like getting out of the mirrors, even if you got to cover them up for a little bit, um, and not talking negative about my body. I really listen there was a time where it was all consuming. So I really needed to get it out to my therapist, to my husband. I never talked about it in front of my daughter. I think that's a huge one for anybody listening that has children. I really had to say like, this is something I need to heal and she doesn't need to be a part of it. Right. But, um, you know, trying to really not talk negatively to myself about my body Um, I've recently stopped filtering completely because I think filtering sends us this message that we need to be altered, right? What's filtering? Filtering, the definition is like the altering of a photo or an image. And like, Mm -hmm. it's just sending ourselves messages that saying like, I'm not good enough. I need to alter my appearance basically. Mm -hmm. Um, And then a big step that I've taken is throwing out clothes that don't fit me Mm. and that aren't comfortable. Like jeans, like I just did a huge jean clean out. I'm like, every time I come into this closet, I'm reminded that like, I don't fit into my gold jeans and Mm. it's okay. I'm going to get new jeans and I will just like, so I just fitting into your clothes and feeling comfortable in your clothes is really nice because when you shove yourself into clothes that don't fit, it's just this reminder all day long. Mm, Got to lose seven pounds and I'm not good enough. I don't, how dare I don't, you know, it's like the shame cycle will start to like 
you know, fit into your jeans, yeah. your piece of whatever, you know, it's like, it's really easy to go to not being very nice to yourself. So I think getting rid of the clothes is a big one too. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. Definitely. I feel like a lot of people that's I feel like a goal is to have a piece of clothing in the closet that they don't fit in that they want to fit in in the future. And I think that would just be a huge drag to see that all the time and be reminded, yeah, like, oh, my body needs rid, to change. Yeah. Like get no, rid of the gold jeans. Like who started that? I don't know. Some, <laughs> some like really horrible, like tabloid, <laughs> yeah. like get rid of the gold jeans. I had so many gold jeans and uh, yeah, I threw them all away. I was like, took a garbage. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Just threw them all. Yeah. Um, yeah. And dresses and anything that doesn't mm -hmm. fit you. Like, yeah. Totally. No, that's great mm -hmm. advice. What yeah. um, if there were one of those things or something different as a small step for our listeners to take with them this week? What is one thing that they should focus on or do to work toward that body acceptance? I think slowing down and having the time and the space and I don't even mean a lot of slowing but down, down but like even taking a moment in our days to say what do I need what does my body need how am I feeling you know you can put your hands on your heart like what do what am I feeling in my body right now what do I need what does my soul need and kind of really getting in touch with our intuition because when we're recovering from any sort of body image, eating, disordered eating, et cetera, we're oftentimes really not embodied in our bodies. We're really living outside of ourselves, almost like objectifying and looking at ourselves as an object, whether it's in a mirror or a photo or just in our heads. And if we can really get in touch with our bodies again and our intuition, and it's, you know, it can be as simple as stopping at your desk and just taking a couple deep breaths and just being like, how, how are you feeling? Like, what do I need? What do I need mentally? What do I need physically? What do I need spiritually to help me right now? I think getting in questions. tune with ourselves is like, yeah. it helps a lot. Absolutely. Those are great questions. I definitely encourage everyone listening to take those with them this week and pause and ask yourself those questions. That's beautiful. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for sharing your insights, your story, your advice today. If people want to learn more about you, where should they go? Um, we're very active on Instagram. It's a uh, beyond.beauty.project. Our website is beyondbeautyproject.com. And we're a little bit on TikTok, but that's just starting. So our website and our Instagram is perfect. Love it. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Anything else you would like to add to the conversation before we wrap up? Um, I think start really celebrating the things that make you unique. Start writing them down mm. and yeah. celebrating them. I love that. Beautiful advice. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for listening. I hope you have a wonderful week filled with self-love and confidence and kindness.